The two old men on the looms looked at each other and in one unified croaky voice said, Bring the items here, lad. Scowling down at Uracil, Requiem snapped, Uracil! He didn't need to say more. Hurriedly, Uracil carried the oboe and Turkish delights over to the pair. I believe there should be another, one of the old men said, peering down his glasses. Yes, another, a third item, croaked the second man. Still holding on to a gear, Requiem scowled at Freya, but did not need to speak. Oh, yes, sorry, she said sheepishly as she passed them the ring. The two old men examined the items whilst Aguerre raised a tentative finger. Permit me, my friend, he said warily. You still need one more item. Are any of you members of the Weaver's Guild? Eurasil replied vaguely, transfixed by all the carpets. No, I'm afraid we're all members of other guilds. Well, all except Requiem here. Ah, Mr Requiem. If you were to join the Weaver's Guild, I would be able to supply you with the item that you need, said Aguirre, still cautious of Requiem. Requiem dropped his head in resignation. What do I have to do, then? Upbeat, Aguirre replied. Repeat after me. I pledge my allegiance to the Weaver's Guild and those mustard-yellow bongos to Aguirre. Requiem repeated the words in an unemotional monotone reluctantly raising his head and scrunching his eyes as if in pain, he called to Uracil. Give him the bongos, Uracil. You're a member of the Musicians Guild now. You should get discount on another pair. Tearing himself away from a particularly loud carpet, Uracil sighed and handed over his bongos to Aguerre reluctantly. With a beaming smile, Aguerre said, Thank you, Brother Requiem. Here, take this new member folder. It has contact numbers and a wealth of information in it. Flicking through the folder, Requiem asked with some confusion, Is this what I needed? What you spoke of earlier, I mean. You will find its contents invaluable throughout your life. You can trust me on that. We offer an excellent valuation service, for instance, that will ensure you only buy quality goods whilst abroad. Seeing the stress returning to Requiem's face, Aguerre quickly added, But this is what you need right now. Aguerre passed Requiem a knotted ball of golden string. Looking at it with some puzzlement, Requiem asked, So do I give it to those men with the other gifts? Are they combined in some mystical fashion? Aguerre smiled. No, no. The oboe is for old man one. The ring for old man too, and the Turkish delight that is for me. The bongos were your payment for guild membership. Chewing on a pistachio Turkish delight, Aguerre continued, Spicy Gio, you should be commended on your choice of these most excellent sweets. Getting his fingers well and truly knotted in the string, Requiem spoke in frustration. And how is this going to release havoc unto the world, apart from driving me mad? Oh, Brother Requiem, this string will not release havoc unto the world. It will allow yourself, Spicy Gio, Sparkly Freya and Tuneful Uracil to bring him back. Bring him back? inquired Freya. Yes, yes, gather round, Aguirre whispered, beckoning everyone towards him. Now, I implore you not to scream and to be very, very careful. He is not a day person. Are you ready? The tension could be cut with a knife as Requiem, Gio, Freya and Eurosil looked at one another and nodded tentatively in agreement. OK, OK, you wanted to release havoc unto the world? Aguirre turned behind him and wrestled with some oddments before turning back to the group with a black cloth draped over something on the palm of his hand. Suddenly, that something moved beneath the cloth. Freya dug her nails into Gio's arm. Uracil backed away, and Requiem's eyes opened wide, eager to know what it was. You cry havoc, and I give you! Aguirre yanked the black cloth away. This itty-bitty kitty. A small, dishevelled white kitten sat on Aguirre's palm. The group looked stunned. 
none more so than Gio who, after the kitten roared with its mightiest meow, lost all control and fell about laughing. Havoc is a deaf cat, he cried. How do you know he's deaf? said Frere defensively. Don't be so mean. I think he's really cute. She stroked Havoc on his chin, causing him to purr loudly. He's a white cat with blue eyes, stated Gio. The genetic mutation that produces that also causes malformation of the inner ear, and so these cats are deaf, he said boastfully, pointing an exacting finger at Freya. I would have thought you of all people would have known that. Oh, he can hear you just fine, spited Gio. He does have other attributes, though, said Aguirre cheerily. Disgruntled, Requiem said, Yeah, like what? Coughing furballs at fifty feet? I don't know why we came here. I'm sorry, we should have listened to Spicy Gio to begin with. Catching himself, he ranted. What is it with this Spicy Gio anyway? When you join a guild house, you take on certain prefixes in their presence. Spicy, sparkly, tuneful and woven. So, Brother Requiem, you will be known as Brother Requiem within the Weaver's Guild. But in the presence of any other guild... You will be woven, Requiem, answered Aguirre. Havoc jumped from Aguirre's palm to sit on Freya's shoulder, rubbing his head against hers as he purred. Snatching the string from Requiem, Freya quashed any doubt over what to do with the cat. I don't care what any of you say, she said determinedly. I like him, and if he wants to come along, then that's fine with me. Turning to Havoc, stroking his head, Freya spoke in her cute voice. Don't worry about the fat spicy one or the mean woven one. They just don't want any harm coming to you as what we're about to do could be dangerous. Is that okay with you? Do you want some danger? Do you? Yes, there's a good kitty. Shaking his head in dismay, Requiem said, Looks like we have a new member of the group. Just don't be molting on my suit, okay? Turning to Aguirre, Requiem said, Thank you, Aguirre. Brother Aguirre, he corrected with a lifted finger. With barely concealed irritation, Requiem sighed, Thank you, Brother Aguirre. We must take our leave now. Requiem turned and began to lead the group to the door. Just as they were about to step outside, Old Man One called out, Do not worry, if you cannot find him, Just trail the string on the ground like a snake. Or waggle it in the air, continued Old Man too. Havoc will always find you, wherever you may be. Thank you, said Eurasil respectfully. And here, Aguirre dropped a rolled carpet onto Gio's chest. This really is a genuine flying carpet. Good for one trip, or until it unravels. Struggling under the weight of the carpet, Gio called out, What am I supposed to do with this? Here, said Requiem, as he put his hand on the carpet, disintegrating it. Could we please clean ourselves up a little before we leave? Gio and Freya disintegrated their food and jewellery reluctantly, before the group walked out of the Weaver's Guild with Havoc nestled into the front of Freya's top. So, what now? asked Freya, as she stroked Havoc and pulled funny faces. Tearing his gaze away from the food stall, Gio replied, I suggest we go back to Eurasil's sanctuary and decide our next move. Right you are, said Eurasil eagerly. This way, we'll summon a taxi when we're outside. Rubbing his hands with glee, a wide smile crept across his face as he added, It's late. The journey should be even quicker this time. The others moaned, but followed Eurasil nonetheless. This time they all kept their heads down to avoid being attracted by all the wonders for sale in the bazaar. A great deal of time had passed in their pursuit of sparklies, food and the little kitten. The sun had set on Istanbul and they were about to take their lives into their hands once more, but this time with the added danger of being in the dark. They beckoned the rather beaten taxis, having decided to hedge their bets on survival and split into two groups. Eurasil, Freya and Havoc got into the front cab, whilst Requiem and a decidedly nervous Gio walked hesitantly towards the second. "'Are you sure about this?' asked Gio in a high-pitched voice. 
I can walk, you know. It's not far. Only a few miles over near mountainous terrain I'm not familiar with. I'm sure I can manage it. Requiem squeezed Gio into the back seat. For such a big guy, you're more of a scaredy cat than that tiny furball we just picked up. Now get... Gio's head popped back out of the taxi. How about the carpet? I'm sure the carpet was meant to get us back, you know, he garbled. Putting both hands on Gio's head and forcing him down with all his might, Requiem retorted, The only way that thing is going to fly is if we drop it out of the ivory tower and everyone concentrates on keeping it from unravelling. Now take note from the tiny little kitten and get in there. With a pop, Gio was forced back into the taxi, leaving Requiem bright red with exertion. Havoc, meanwhile, was sat on the parcel shelf in the front taxi looking back at them. I'm sure he's smiling, Gio said bitterly as he looked at the cat from between the front seats. Havoc lay on his back, paws in the air, whilst Freya stroked his belly. Enjoying the moment of luxury, Havoc gave a sideways glance towards Gio's taxi. See? See? Did you see that? He's mocking me. I'm being mocked by a skinny white kitten. Ha! I'll show him. Driver? Gio tapped the driver on the shoulder and spoke to him in his best Turkish. Don't let them beat us to the house, OK? Chocolate to shake you er la. Whether it was because such a big man was so afraid of getting into his taxi, or because he also thought the cat was mocking Gio, the driver found the whole thing highly amusing. He did not need Gio to speak in Turkish to make the journey home into a race. It was going to be whether they asked for it or not. Gio's taxi driver beeped his horn, gave a thumbs up to the driver in front and revved his engine. Nudging their way through the throngs of people, a gap appeared, revealing open highway. Needing no more encouragement, both drivers put their foot to the floor and they were off. Eurasil's taxi got off to a flying start, whilst Keo's driver had to stop suddenly and negotiate a man carrying cups of tea. As they passed, Requiem shot out a hand with some money. I'll have one of those, he said calmly. With the first hurdle successfully negotiated, they took off. Requiem casually sipping tea in the front and Gio sitting in the middle of the back seat as he held on to both handles on either side of the roof. Gio's driver undertook some valiant weaving in order to catch up with Eurasil's taxi. As they raced, bumper to bumper, through the empty night highways of Istanbul, Gio leaned forwards so that his head was in between Requiem and the driver. Look at that damn cat! he shouted in annoyance. Havoc was curled up in a tiny ball on the parcel shelf, licking his paws as casually as if he were under a tree on a calm summer's day. Looking back at Gio, Havoc forgot to pull his tongue back in, enraging Gio still further as he stared at Havoc intently. Havoc stared back calmly, his tongue still sticking out, and one ear folded back. Gio was determined to outstare Havoc and sweat streamed from his brow as he tried desperately to keep his gaze fixed on the kitten. The staring match came to a premature end as Gio's taxi veered violently to the left. Traffic had built up in front of them and instead of stopping, the driver carried on down the hard shoulder, overtaking Eurasil's taxi. Instantly, Gio forgot his grievances with Havoc. Closing his eyes, he muttered, I am Zen... I am then. No, you're not, Requiem snapped. You're nearly in the front seat is what you are. Now get back there. Eurasil and Freyra are right behind us. Seeing his opponent's manoeuvre, Eurasil's driver reversed against traffic and gave chase. Gleefully, Eurasil rubbed his hands together as he peered at Geo's taxi. That's it, that's it, just a little closer. Suddenly, Eurasil gave a shout of excitement as he waved his pointed finger. Oh, oh, I see an opening to the left over there. Hitting the brakes, the driver shot down the narrow side alley that Eurasil had been frantically pointing towards. The cobbles and sharp turns made for an uncomfortable ride. Eurasil turned back to Freya. Speaking in a jittery voice, he said, This will show them, ha <laughs> ha. Freya smiled back at her crazy friend before leaning over to stroke Havoc, who was purring heavily, apparently unfazed by the extreme journey. 
she was still experiencing that empty feeling she'd had ever since they'd got out of the first taxi. The yellow taxis looked so familiar, but nowhere else in the world would they race through the streets like this. Right now, their driver was using one hand to speak on his mobile phone whilst traversing the undulating terrain with a steering wheel and gear stick in the other. Stroking havoc took her mind off things. The same could not be said for Gio, however, who was almost green. Are we winning? he asked Fraley. Requiem sipped his tea, which he was constantly recharging. It's hard to say. This place is a bit of a rabbit warren. They could be anywhere. He was cut short as Uracil's taxi flew out of the side road to their left and cut in front of them, causing them to swerve and mount the pavement on the other side of the road. Gio's face turned from green to red as he stared at Havoc, who appeared to give him a sly wink as he rubbed his head against Freya's. Right, that is the last straw. I'm going to, to, to do something. Something unbecoming when this is over, said Gio through gritted teeth. The mountain upon which Uracil's sanctuary sat loomed in front of them. Uracil's taxi was just ahead. Clearly this was going to be a fight to the finish. Their taxi driver turned to Gio and said something he did not need a translator for. Leaning back, Gio held on tight to the handles and dug himself deep into his seat. Upon reaching the foot of the mountain, their taxi did not follow Eurosil's, but instead shot off to the right and hurtled along a dusty mountain pass through the woodland. Branches crashed against the windscreen and the car hit tree roots every few metres, sending all the occupants flying. With many changes of gears and liberal use of the handbrake, Gio's taxi flew out of the woods into a ball of dust right in front of Eurosil's house. By the time Eurosil's taxi arrived, both Requiem and Gio had got out of their taxi and were cleaning away the debris. Gio shook his driver's hand with glee and paid him ten times the actual fare. Holding the door for Freya as she got out of the taxi, Gio surreptitiously stuck his tongue out at Havoc who was clinging to her shoulder. Eurosil was most displeased. Drat, are you sure we had you there? Confidently, Gio taunted, You are never even close. Simultaneously, he stared daggers at Havoc. Havoc sprang off Freya and landed at Gio's sandaled feet. Oh, you made a friend. Isn't that so cute? Freya said adoringly as Havoc zigzagged in and out of Gio's legs on full purr. Yeah, adorable, replied Gio as he crossed his arms and looked around, pretending not to have noticed Havoc. Freya followed Eurasil and Requiem into the house, leaving Gio and the tiny Havoc, who was now sitting squarely on his foot, to resume their staring match. Gio, called Requiem, but Gio did not move. He was determined to outstare the cute little kitten who was still purring and looking at him with wide, innocent eyes. Havoc! I've got some milk! cried Freya. As she walked down to meet them, Havoc stuck his tongue out and dug his claws into Gio's foot as he leapt off towards Freya. Gio was determined not to yelp. Instead, he followed Freya back up the hill to Eurosil's house. I've got your number, he muttered under his breath to Havoc, who was purring loudly, doing his best to look cute on Freya's shoulder. Once inside, Eurosil said thoughtfully, Right, well, we have a big day ahead of us tomorrow, so I suggest we get some rest. Freya, my dear, you can have that room over there. Requiem, will you be okay on the settee? Havoc, you can have the footstool. What about me? What do I get? asked Gio with some disdain, as Havoc nestled into his comfy stool. Oh, well, seeing as you slept so well in it earlier, I thought you wouldn't mind the sun lounger on the balcony again, replied Eurosil dismissively as he pointed towards the balcony doors. Gio was left standing, unable to retort as Eurosil and Frey retired to their rooms. Requiem covered himself with a blanket, and Havoc purred loudly. Right, well, I'll keep the mosquitoes company, I suppose he grumbled. As Gio closed the glass balcony door behind him, Havoc popped his head up to see him wrestle with the lounger, trying to get comfortable. 
Requiem peered at Havoc. Don't worry, he said wearily. He's only been put outside because he snores so loudly. He sleeps under trees often enough. He'll be fine. Apparently understanding, Havoc nestled his head back down and everyone fell asleep almost instantly, even Geo.